Kiro replaced cursor for me and here is why. Most AI IDEs let you vibe code, ask the AI to build something and hope that it works. It feels fast, but this just creates a mess that you will need to fix later. Amazon just released Kiro, a tool that slows you down on purpose and honestly, that's what makes it a game changer. So today I will show you how it works in three simple steps and in the end, I will give you my honest review. I've turned this whole video into a detailed blog post if you want to follow along or bookmark it for later, link is in the description. Step 1. Why is Cairo different? Most AI tools just give you code when you ask for it. You prompt the AI and it spits something out and you hope that it works. And this might feel fast but it usually leads to messy code, confusing logic and a mountain full of bugs that you will need to fix later. Cairo changes that by giving you two clear modes. The first one is vibe mode and this is your basic chat and code experience just like most AI tools. You can ask for code, quick fixes or suggestions and it responds right away. It's useful for smaller stuff but not for building real features. And then we have the new spec mode. This is where Kiro is different. Spec mode stands for spec driven development and instead of just guessing what you want, Kiro actually helps you plan exactly what your feature needs before writing any code. And this means that you are more likely to get right code the first time, you'll spend less time fixing mistakes and getting confused, and you'll always know why the code is being written and what it's supposed to do. Step 2. Setting up your project. When you open Cairo, you'll see four main buttons on the left. Here's what each one does and why it's there. The first one is agent steering and this is Cairo's way of learning about your project. When you click agent steering, Cairo scans your code and understands how your app works behind the scenes. Specs are like your project's blueprints or to-do list for building. Instead of diving straight into code and feeling overwhelmed or getting stuck, you start by writing out all the features and screens you want your app to have. Once you've listed your specs, Cairo automatically turns them into a clear, actionable building plan. This keeps you focused and gives you a roadmap to follow so you always know what to build next. And then we have agent hooks, and hooks are simple automations that take care of tasks for you. When you add a new feature, you can for example create a hook that automatically updates your documentation so that you don't have to do it yourself. And then we have MCP which stands for Model Context Protocol. It's like a translator that helps an AI like ChatGPT talk to other tools such as APIs, databases or software apps. And this integration in Cairo lets the AI securely connect and interact with real world services. Step 3. Cairo's three-step process. Now for the final part, creating a clear plan for the app. First, First, let's pick the spec option instead of vibe coding. And now I'll give Cairo a simple goal. I want to build an app that lets me keep track of every time I sneeze during the day, specifically a mobile app. Cairo now starts its three step process. So the first step is making something called a requirements file. Think of this file as the blueprint for the entire app. It lays out what the app needs to do. So when Cairo is done, it asks us to look over the whole file to see if the plan looks good. Let's take a quick look together. So as we can see, Cairo writes a short description of the project and then for each part of the app it lists out what's required, which is the requirement, and then it explains how that should work, which is the acceptance criteria. For example, here's the first requirement. As a user, I want to quickly log when I sneeze, so I can track my daily sneeze frequency without interrupting my activities. And the acceptance criteria tells us exactly how that will work. When the user opens the app, then the app should show a big log sneeze button. When the user taps the button, then the app should save that sneeze with the current time. And Cairo always uses this clear structure. It makes it obvious what needs to happen and why. So this requirements file looks good to me, so I'll tell Cairo this looks good, let's now continue. And by the way, if you want to see a full video where I build an app using Cairo, let me know down in the comments and I'll be happy to make one. Now Cairo is creating a design file, and this step is all about how the app will actually be built. Again, Cairo wants us to check over the file before moving forward. This design file explains things like how the app is structured, what tech stack to use, what the main parts of the app are, the app logic and design rules. And what's really cool is that Cairo even draws a rough picture of what
what the app will look like right in the design file. So you basically get to see the app layout before anything is even built. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm happy with how this looks. So I'll click the button that says move to implementation plan. And this is the last part, the tasks step. Here Cairo takes everything from before and breaks it down into a list of tasks that you need to build the app. When Cairo finishes, you'll see an implementation plan. And this is just a checklist of all the steps to complete the app. So all I have to do now is to click start task on task number one and Cairo will start working through the list for me. And just like cursor, it works as an agent to help build the app step by step. And sometimes it will ask if it can run certain commands. But if you click trust command and accept, Cairo will remember that command and run it automatically next time. One thing I love about Cairo is that it runs tests for your code all the time automatically. With cursor, you have to tell it to run tests yourself, but Cairo just handles this automatically. So when a task is finished, it turns green and the box is checked off. You can run all of the tasks all at one and Cairo will queue them up and keep going one by one. And this is great because you can let it work in the background while you do something else like checking your email, for example. So as promised, here is my honest take. If you want speed and quick code edits, cursor is hard to beat. It's fast, flexible and perfect for rapid iterations and advanced coding. Cairo is all about structure and planning. It's slower and since it's still in preview, you might hit a few bugs, but you get detailed step-by-step -step plans and much cleaner code. Cairo really shines when you want to avoid surprises and build things right the first time. So now that you know how Cairo works compared to other tools, there's still this one AI coding strategy that I've been using recently that's completely changed how I approach building apps. And it works with any AI tool, not just Cairo. So check out this video right here where I break down the exact framework and how I used it to clone Kali AI's app in under 15 minutes.